This white man is not going to save you from God, brother. Neither shall any uh, save you out of my hand. This white man is not going to save you from a black gun. Believe that. What's up, guys? Welcome to What Do You Mean? I'm here with Vocab Alone. And uh, right behind this is the Hebrew Israelites. And now, Vocab's recently written a book on this. It's called Barack Obama and the Hebrew Israelites, or versus the Hebrew Israelites. And um, because you've written a book on this, can you tell us who are the Hebrew Israelites and what are their basic beliefs? Hebrew Israelites, it's a new religion that's growing, growing fast, and really prominent in the city, but because of the internet spread not all over. And what they believe is that Certain people are Israelites and can be saved, and other people are not Israelites and cannot be saved. And they think, for example, that if you were brought over here, your forefathers were, as a slave in the transatlantic slave trade, it fulfills a prophecy and is a way to determine that you're a true Israelite, and the folks in Israel or the folks who claim to be Jews are all frauds. Let me give you an example of their core thesis from Deuteronomy 28:68. This is okay. a very, very important verse for them, John. Okay. And it reads... And the Lord will bring you back in ships to Egypt, a journey that I promised that you should never make again. And there you shall offer yourself for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. So they interpret Egypt there as America or a way to basically say uh, slavery. And then the ships they interpret as slave ships. And they say, who fulfilled those so-called African-Americans? And so then their message is, now that we know who we really are, God's people, now we have to follow the law for salvation. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, before we get into a little bit more of that, um, where did this movement start? Harlem, New York. There was a congregation in the 20s and 30s called the Commandment Keepers, which was like a black Judaism congregation. And a group of men left that. And then in 1969 is their official start date, where they began their own school, and it was called the... Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge at 1 West 125th Street. So sometimes we call these types of Hebrew Israelites 1 Westers in reference to their influential school. So that's really where they began. No one knew much about them in the 70s, even in the 80s, but then they started getting on public access uh, TV, so they became known sort of in New York and they were always in Times Square. With YouTube, they started blowing up. So in the past decade, they've seen immense growth and now they're starting to even go into places like Ghana. For this group behind us, IUIC, does mission trips to Ghana to recover lost Israelites who never made the journey, but are still supposedly Israelites, for example. Okay, so when, you, when you're talking about, they started in 1969, you're not talking about all Hebrew Israelites, you're talking about the IUIC, the group that's behind this, correct? The first recorded evidence we have of somebody saying, hey y'all, black Americans are actually the true descendants of Jacob, right? That takes place in 1896 with a man named Crowdy. But he had black and white followers. He had a different message overall, but part of his message was that, hey, we're the true Israelites. He said he received this in a vision while he was chopping a tree down or whatever. Okay. And uh, his followers are still around today, but they're not growing. These guys are, but these guys have taken that basic idea that black folks are the true Israelites, expanded it, added other doctrine, uh, doctrines, and in a lot of ways made it more exclusivist based upon perceived ethnic identity. Okay, so when, when you talk about this ethnic ide identity, is that is the tribes only black tribes, or, or what are the different tribes? Good question. Since there's a lots of types of different Israelites, let me specifically explain the guys behind us and their ilk, meaning other groups that held the same doctrine. If you see them on the street, look for something called the 12 tribes chart. The 12 tribes chart will have the supposed 12 tribes of Israel, and on it will be in a corollary with some modern day ethnic group. For example, Ephraim is said to be the Puerto Ricans. Issachar are said to be Mexicans. Judah are said to be so-called African Americans. They use so-called because they're saying we're not really African Americans. Benjamites, uh, the tribe of Benjamin, would be uh, Jamaicans and folks like that. Levi are the Haitians. And so you could see that it's uh, some Hispanics and then Gad are Native Americans, supposedly Reuben, that is supposedly the Seminole Indians. And so you see that there's some other people included, but Judah, that would be black Americans, is supposed to kind of be in headship, in lead. And that's why historically some people refer to them as the black Hebrew sites. They don't like that designation though. They say okay. it's racist actually. That's interesting. Okay, so as, the, as it relates to these tribes, how does salvation work? So I guess the, the broader right. question I have is, 
Um, they're, they're preaching on the corner behind here. So what are they trying to get people to see? Are they preaching to everybody or are they just preaching to some people or, or what is their message that they're trying to get across? Well, they perceive uh, people of European descent, white people, to be actually descendants of Esau, which is a wild idea. So they call them Edomites. So like a Cameron's an Edomite, for example. If they saw him walking by, they might say, hey, death to America, the nuclear missiles are gonna rain down on your head soon. That might be their message to an Edomite, so-called. So okay. But if they perceive someone to be uh, qualified to be on the chart, then they might say something like this. Hey, young brother, you've been lied to. You've been told you're African-American, but you're actually part of the best nation on earth, God's chosen people, Israel, royalty. Here, let me show you from the scriptures. Let's look at Deuteronomy 28, 68. And let me show you this verse and this verse that shows only our people fulfill these curses. Therefore, we're the only ones being punished for disobeying the commandments. Therefore, we need to wake up to our true identity because we've been lied to about our ethnic identity and then start keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments so we can get out of this condition that we're in. That okay. that's, would be one way they would approach it. Okay, and so then as far as salvation is related, does is everybody have a shot at going to heaven or how does that work? What no. does their, their afterlife look like? They would say that so-called Gentiles, so that's not just Edomites, Europeans, that's Ishmaelites, Arabs, that's folks who are Indian, uh, not Native Americans, but Indian, for example, Japanese, Chinese, all those folks don't even qualify for salvation. So them keeping the law is irrelevant. They don't, that's, they're not designed to do that. They would misuse Romans 9, which says, Jacob I have loved, Esau as I have hated, to show, hey, God hates these nations as well. Why should we love them? There's no salvation for them. And so um, it's very exclusivist. So those nations' destiny are to be slaves, servants, for the Israelites in the kingdom. Once Yahawashai, that's their fake Hebrew pronunciation, excuse me, Yahawashai is their incorrect Hebrew pronunciation for Jesus. Once Yahawashai sets up his kingdom, he's going to put the Israelites in charge of the government, and then they'll have other nations as their slaves. Interesting. Okay, so wait, you've been studying this for a long time, and... and um, what would you say is one of the most surprising things that you've, you've came to study um, as right. you've been studying this? Well, so if you look at this group behind us, IUIC stands for Israel United in Christ. If you Google their name, IUIC, and then you put not African, you're going to find something very surprising. So here's a very surprising thing I think most people would say, huh? They go out of their way to say we are not African. And so what they'll do is, if you, in this Google search I'm telling you to do, you'll see these images, usually kind of disparaging images of Africans, often East Africans, say a Kenyan, maybe someone from Somalia, something like that, doing a, a kind of traditional practice, maybe painting their body a certain way and stretching out a body part such as a lip, and they'll say, we are not Hamites. They think Africans are descendants of Ham, and them as Israelites are descendants of Shem. And a key way to know is, if you got in slavery, came over, then you're not a descendant of Ham, you're a descendant of Shem. And so that's part of their justification or the reason they get for why Africans sold them into slavery is because they weren't of the same people group. That's and so they'll say, well, those weren't even our brothers in the first place. Those were members of another nation. And so as a result, John, they teach, hey, Israelites supposedly are you actually going to be enslaving Africans as well in the kingdom. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, um, one a uh, couple more questions um yeah the one thing that i want to know is why is this important for christians to understand and to be knowledgeable um why should other christians be concerned or or up to date on what's going on here yeah if you live in the city you've probably seen these guys in the street corner and so we should pay attention to what's happening in our neighborhoods we should care about our neighbors we should be concerned about directions aspects of the culture are going Part of it's just neighborly love. Part of it's just fulfilling the Great Commission um, and recognizing this is, a, this is a real thing that's got momentum and it's growing. And so that's one reason. But then also, a lot of the things that they attack are key aspects of Christian faith. They deny the deity of Christ. They deny that the gospel is for all people. They deny the triune nature of God. There's all kinds of core doctrines that they deny. And so it's heretical teaching, making inroads into our communities, especially the black church, but not only the black church. And so they're pulling people out or they're corrupting people's idea of what the Bible says because they'll open the Bible 
preach hate and then say, well, the scripture says this. And so that's a concern, that misrepresentation for scripture. And here's what happens. They take an already currently divided, divisive society that's having challenges in that area and they exacerbate it. They make it worse. And so it's bad for everybody. But the church especially needs to realize that this is a false gospel leading people to damnation. Right, right. And and one thing um, that I've thought about, like, um, why it's so strong, and, and let me know what you think about this, but why it's so powerful is because not only is it related to their religious beliefs, but it's also uh, related to their race, which is which is their identity. So, so you have an identity issue here. So it's not just as much as just uh, dealing with just doctrine, but you also have to understand the context of that. Um, it's also related to their their sense of identity, uh, which is where um, things get a lot more complex. And is that right. why you would say that there's a lot more emotion behind like um, in talking with them and a lot and that kind of thing? Yeah, because the way they've got it all wrapped up together in one package is that if you disagree with their doctrine, they view it essentially as a racist move that you're attacking their ethnic identity right. as well. And so um, that's why it's very emotional and passionate and rhetoric. And they don't see that as a sign of weakness. They think they're just, they think they're in the tradition of the Hebrew prophets. That's the way they style themselves and think of themselves. And some of their distinctive garb has to do with that. I mean, if you could see in the video, you know, they have fringes on, for example. You know, they always have fringes. And if they see an Israelite who doesn't have their fringes, they'll say, Where's your fringes at, brother? They won't have hats because they believe they're prophesying from the Bible. They believe that a correct interpretation of a verse in Corinthians is that you can't have your head covered when you prophesy from the Bible. And so that's what they think they're doing. But really, they're giving a theodicy. They're explaining why the conditions for black and Americans are bad. And in some ways, they don't seem to be getting better. And they think the answer is keep the laws, statutes, and commandments to build our nation back to get ready for when we're going to operate and run the kingdom. Right. So, so that that makes sense. So it's very important because it it gives them um, a sense of hope and meaning and purpose. And so, um, giving them uh, the true gospel, um, it, it's it's going to have to be presented to them in a way also that's going to show them the the hope and then the true meaning and purpose, right. which is that okay, cool. Yeah. So, well, thanks a lot, man. And so, for those that are more interested in this subject and want to learn more about the Hebrew Israelites. Um, I know that you've written a book on this too, so uh, right, can you yeah. show them the book again? Okay, and uh, where can they get this book? Amazon.com carries it, as well as a place called The Book Patch, physical or digital. And it's an easy read, under 150 pages, and I made it purposely conversational, and I don't refute every argument. This book is designed to be an information gap filler, so a primer on what they believe. So then when you go to have a conversation, maybe not on the street, but your coworker, your family member, you'll have much more knowledge and a better uh, ground groundwork done to be able to discuss with them in an intelligent way. That's really good. And and I think this is an area where apologists should be also focusing on as well. Yeah, um, it's been neglected for a long time. Absolutely. And so you also have a YouTube channel where, where you talk about these issues a lot, right? And yeah. so um, I'll go ahead and put a link to the description, to, or the link in the description to his YouTube channel down uh, right below. And also, Click on this icon right here, and then you will subscribe to his channel as well. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. You hear that? We both went into slavery. That's right. 